Here we'll learn the branches of the celiac trunk, which supply the liver, pancreas, stomach, and spleen with oxygenated blood. To begin, start a table and denote that the three main branches of the celiac trunk are the left gastric artery, splenic artery, and the common hepatic artery. As we learn these vessels and their branches, it's helpful to recognize that gastro refers to the stomach, hepatic refers to the liver, and splenic refers to the spleen. Let's draw a simplified diagram of these three primary branches of the celiac trunk. Work clockwise to show that the left gastric artery, which travels to the stomach, extends superiorly and towards the left. The splenic artery, which travels to the spleen, extends slightly inferiorly and then towards the left. Notice that as it does so, it twists upon itself. The common hepatic artery extends towards the right. As we'll see, this branch divides, hence the word common in its name, to supply organs that lie in the right side of the abdomen, including the liver. Now we'll redraw these vessels and their branches. Keep in mind that we'll draw the typical branching patterns, but that variation is common. In some individuals, for example, the aforementioned branches are not branches at all, but arise separately. Let's begin with a few contextual details. First, define right and left sides of our diagram. Then draw the descending abdominal aorta. This is the section of the aorta inferior to the diaphragm. Then on the right side of the diagram, draw the gallbladder, which stores bile and surrounding it a section of liver. Then show that the pancreas, which secretes pancreatic juice into the gastrointestinal tract, lies partially over the aorta and points to the left. Show the spleen, which is an organ of the lymphatic system, and anterior to the pancreas, the stomach. Show that the stomach is continuous with the first portion of the small intestine, the duodenum. Now we'll draw the branches of the celiac trunk. Show that the left gastric artery ascends towards the left side of the stomach and wraps along its superior border, also known as the lesser curvature. Next, we'll draw the splenic artery, which is often described as tortuous because it spirals along its length. Show that the splenic artery descends from the celiac trunk, then travels along the superior border of the pancreas to the spleen. Notice that it travels posterior to the stomach. As it reaches the spleen, show that the splenic artery gives rise to short gastric arteries which supply the stomach, specifically the fundus of the stomach. Then show that the splenic artery gives rise to the left gastroomental artery which travels along the inferior border of the stomach, also known as the greater curvature. Next, return to the celiac trunk and show that the common hepatic artery travels to the right. As it does so, it gives off the right gastric artery, which anastomoses with the left gastric artery along the border of the stomach. Then show that the common hepatic artery splits to form two vessels, the hepatic artery proper, which travels to the liver, and the gastroduodenal artery, which, as its name implies, travels to the stomach, gastro, and the duodenum of the small intestine. Now return to the hepatic artery proper and show that it splits to form right and left hepatic arteries. These will continue to branch throughout the liver. Show that the right hepatic artery gives rise to the cystic artery, which travels to the gallbladder. Cystic refers to the gallbladder. Then return to the gastroduodenal artery and show that it passes deep to the stomach and duodenum, then splits to form the right gastroomental artery, which anastomoses with the left gastroomental artery, and the superior pancreatico-duodenal artery, which, as its name implies, sends branches to the pancreas and duodenum. Let's summarize these arteries in our table. 
Denote that the left gastric artery gives rise to esophageal branches. These were omitted in our diagram for simplicity. The splenic artery gives rise to short gastric arteries and the left gastroomental artery. The common hepatic artery sends off the right gastric artery, then splits to form the hepatic artery proper and the gastroduodenal artery. The hepatic artery proper splits to form the left and right hepatic arteries. The right hepatic artery sends off the cystic artery to the gallbladder. The gastroduodenal artery gives rise to the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery and the right gastroomental artery, which anastomoses with the left gastroomental artery. In our table, denote the following clinical correlation. In celiac artery compression syndrome, also known as Dunbar syndrome, compression of the celiac trunk, usually by the median arcuate ligament of the diaphragm, reduces blood flow and causes abdominal pain after eating. This concludes our diagram.